Pushing yourself is hard. Think of a time mentally you thought you couldn't, physically feeling there's just no way to keep pushing. What do you do? Sit on the couch, turn on Netflix, and push whatever it is till tomorrow? At a human level, we often wake up each day with a whisper of, I can't. Welcome to The Info, a podcast that encourages and equips sales leaders to prospect smarter. Hi, I'm your host, Bryce Curry, VP of Marketing at Cole Information. Sam Taggart, the founder of DDD Experts, public speaker, author, and consultant, has created something special. In this episode, Sam and I talk about how to find and create discipline in your life. This was actually a very encouraging episode for me, and I hope you connect with Sam's tips to unlock your potential. It's time for you to get moving and not sit and wait for it to just happen. Hello, everybody. Today, my guest on the Info Podcast is Sam Taggart. I would say uh, the leader, the the North Star for the door knocking industry. Um, He's the CEO of the D2D Experts and founder of D2D Association. He started uh, a conference called uh, D2D Con, which we will talk about here in a second. Author, podcaster, public speaker, uh, dad, a guy that you need to be following on your socials. Sam, thanks for taking some time out and uh, joining me today on this episode. No, oh, super honored to be here. It's uh, It's been fun to be working with you guys for the last six years. You guys were at the very, very first door-to-door con, and it's been fun yeah. to see the support, and you guys have been absolutely awesome with us, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I've had a chance to uh, attend the, the door-to-door con um, events, and I, I got to tell you, <clears throat> I'm not just saying this because you're on this episode. We we talk about it all the time internally at, 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 in our meetings. So we we co- uh, our company attends a lot of different conferences across our industries. Um, and what Sam has built with D 2 D Con is really something that I would use the word special. Um, obviously, it's focused. There's intentionality with specific um, industries like solar and pest control and alarm. Um, and getting out there and and, and knocking doors and, and, and closing sales. Um, but it it's an event that I, I got to admit, um, I, I've walked away from some of your speakers um, uh, crying, energized, motivated, um, and convicted to some degree all at the same time. But I always go away from those events. And we're, we're, we're there as an attendee, but also as a sponsor um, capacity and get so much out of those events. And I, I got to ask you, kind of like, what's what sparked that idea of creating a, a conference like that? I was on a, med- I mean, it's a weird answer. Like most people are like, oh, you know, strategy and want to start a business. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I was sales, running a solar company, and I went on a three day meditation retreat in the desert, and I just it was like a solo, drop you off on a rock, mm. only drink water, see you later, and. Yeah. I'm day two, I had this vision and it was like me speaking on this big stage. And it was this, and I was like, where is that? And I kept asking, what is this? What is this? And mm-hmm. God's like, you're going to start a conference. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. what do you mean? I was like, I've never even been to a conference, let alone started one. <laughs> and so it just kept like coming and coming. And it was like, do this thing. And I'm like, really? To like, like a door to door conference. And I was like, no, that's never been done. And everybody's like competitors. And I don't want to bring, you know, I don't want to bring more bad to the industry when they like, you know, rip each other's heads off. And, you know, so I just was like, well, all right. And then finally, it just was so strong that it's like, you have to do this. And so I was like, okay. And so I launched the first one and, you know, this was like summer 2017. um, And we had our first event January, 2018. And, you know, it's been, it's been a roller coaster ever since. I mean, it's been a fun, fun journey to see the impact it has made because the mission still is the mission is to unify up level bring honor and integrity to the door-to-door space. And I feel like we've really been pressing forward with that. I, when I when I talk to our real estate agents, you know, we have tens of thousands of real estate agents uh, it, that, that, that use one of our products. And and I'm like, you, you, you got to check out this conference because, you know, I know at first you might read about it and it's going to, you know, talk about some, some other verticals or industries that don't apply to you. But the stuff that Sam is talking about, the stuff that he is bringing uh, through his platforms applies. Um, and and it, I was reminded of this actually indirectly. I was talking to one of the top real estate um, 
well, he's an agent broker, but he's a team out of San Diego a couple weeks ago. And one of the elements of their teams that they implement is actually going out in the neighborhood, knocking on doors, introducing, staying top of mind. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's super effective uh, for him, even though he's in real estate. Right. And well, here, we, we've helped a ton of realtors that are the carnivorous realtor. And I think that there's the herbivore, meaning they're just waiting for somebody to call them because they happen to have a yeah. card out or, you know, they happen to have friends that know they're a realtor. That's one way to do being a realtor. But like we, we really do well with those that are hunters and we're saying, Hey, like yeah. if you want, not just to wait for your phone to ring and you want to actually learn how to proactively go attack, you know, your market door knocking or cold calling and, and getting aggressive and kind of this coming for you mentality is, is huge. And it takes a, a different muscle that I'll, I think a lot of people need to awaken in today's real estate market. You know, so it's like, you have to be aggressive. You have to be somebody that's willing that's right. to be different than the average mom. That's a realtor. Right. Right. Sam, our podcast, like I said, is across all kinds of different verticals, primarily real estate and insurance, and then and then home services. But we do we do have like C level of you know large uh, you know insurance logo uh, con, you know brands and stuff like that that listen and and I I I think about you know they're they're thinking about the different strategies right they're coming out of Q one looking at Q two three four they they might have heard a little bit about door knocking but one of the things I did want to ask you just to to kind of unpack a little bit um, was you know what are some you know, if I'm if if I'm a, a district manager for uh, a, a, a you know PNC logo company, um, you know State Farm, All State, all you know all those, um, how how do I kind of think about door knocking and its application to my agents? You know, I might have a, a group of agents that are just new and starting out um, versus established book of business, um, and I'm you know evaluating different sales channels. You know, is there maybe a couple, three things, two things, five things that they should kind of think about if, if, if you know, dropping uh, some people into a neighborhood is impactful? I, I'd say, first off, change your mentality, meaning I think a lot of people have this stigma to door knocking and they're like, oh, I don't mm -hmm. want to be seen as one of those or I'm going to get a reputation as one of those. And, you know, so it's like, first off, just have this mindset of like proud to be a knocker. Like, yes, it's the best thing. Yes, we love it and not be ashamed mm -hmm. of it. I think some sure. people in an interview process or whatnot, are, they're afraid to talk about door knocking. They're afraid to like even go there. And and you can spin it in a couple different ways. You don't have to say, oh, you knock doors. You can say, you know, you're going out and finding, you know, potential distressed properties or you're looking for these right. types of homes. And it's like the only way to do that is go out there and actually talk to them. And so, you know, you can phrase it however you want. But like at the end mm -hmm. of the day, first thing is just have the mentality of like, hey, we're hunters. And the problem is, is like the guy that's the district manager forgets the roots in which he started to become the district manager. And I think a lot of times it's monkey see, monkey do. So what they do is the new people come in and they see these people that have been there for three, four years working a pipeline and a referral base and all this stuff. But they forget like, OK, they don't have a pipeline. They don't have a referral base. They don't have that. And so you you your problem is, is like if you as leaders aren't in the trenches and you're not leading from the front and you're not like kind of praising the, the, the initial contact, the initial hunt, mm -hmm. then they never really get a good flavor, a good taste of what that should look like. You're like, yeah, you go do it. We don't really do it anymore because we've got this pipeline, but it's like, go do it. And, and to tell your people to just go knock is like suicide. It's like, really, you're mm -hmm. going to send me out to the wolves by myself with no tools, no training, no support. You know, we have DDD university where we have like online training and stuff, but like you know, that's one thing, but having in-person training is like a big other part of that. Somebody willing to go out there, willing to get their face kicked in, willing to go beat the streets with them. It one builds camaraderie and influence. And two, it helps them see what realistically the result of door knocking could do. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, whether you're an insurance or real estate or, or whatever, it's like an avenue of contacting more people maybe it's a less conversion of a hot lead that came in inbound. But mm -hmm. if I only have one hot lead a day, then it's like, cool, you want to work for like an hour a day? Congratulations. Right. Like, I don't know any, and it's like, <laughs> and that's what happens with selling and commission-based jobs is they like, they really pretend they're productive for like seven hours of the day when realistically they made three phone calls, they had two follow-ups, 
And then they're like, well, let's like, you know, work on the website or like hope our phone rings. And it's like, come on. Like mm-hmm. if you're, if you schedule out, so the, the next thing would be schedule out like non-negotiable time to go out and prospect. And that could be on the phone. That could be in the streets. That could be whatever, but like non-negotiable, don't schedule any meetings, don't schedule any whatevers. We're going out and hitting the streets for two hours, for four mm-hmm. hours, for six hours, whatever that is. And it's like, yeah. you can go mob mentality, take the whole team with you. You can go disperse everybody go find their turf and you assign it and there's many different i mean this is a long-winded answer but like i could go for days on that but like the real thing is is it your schedule and a lot of people get afraid of kind of as a district manager talking hey you need to do this when they're 1099 how do you build the culture where it almost feels w2 it's like we all go do this this is the standard of being part of my brokerage or this is start standard of being on my team you can go work for anybody else but they just don't perform like we do but the standard of being a part of our group is we all go hustle for three hours. We go all hustle for this. And like, that's just part of the requirements of being here. But look, my guys make 10 times more than everybody else that's in this industry because we actually go hunt. So right, having kind of right. that culture is, 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 is another big thing as a manager. Um, I, we were talking a little bit uh, pre-show uh, or just before we started recording. Um, I, I, I follow you. I follow you for uh, personal inspiration. And so I've been a marketer for 20 plus years uh, for different corporations and stuff like that, kind of behind the scenes and, and delivering campaigns and stuff like that and leads to the sales team. And um, the, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot um, and, and, and wanted to have you on to kind of talk about this because it when I see your content, when I've been at your events, um, and, and even some of your, you know, the, the stuff that you post on Instagram, I think about like, man, Sam is like r- motivational. He's, he, he's a motivational, uh, um, person. You're authentic. You're out there on in the streets or, you know, on the curb with, you know, some of your clients, right. Or even for yourself. I mean, you're out there showing, uh, in the, the, you know, what you're teaching. It's not, it's not just, here's this curriculum, go figure it out. What's some of the stuff that, you know, that your team or yourself, you know, could provide? Like if I'm a, if I'm a real estate broker and listening to this and being like, hmm, this is kind of interesting, but I need someone to help me kind of navigate that. What, what kind of services do you, do you guys offer? Yeah, the first, I mean, I appreciate you asking that, Bryce, but I, I think the first and foremost piece to answer and just to speak to what you said is door knocking should never be beneath anybody. And I've always had that mantra, meaning I you know, I made a commitment when I moved from, you know, VP of sales over to consulting and coaching role. Mm-hmm. I was like, I never want to be that guy that was like, oh, I couldn't do. So I teach. I'm like, no, I, I, will, I do <laughs> like, I'm good at this yeah. and teach. Yeah. And that's why yeah. I think we've had success. Um, and you know, from a, how do I help a realtor? How do I help a brokerage? Um, you know, we had the top real estate brokerage of Utah come to our business boot camp, and they were mind blown. We have a, once a month, we do a two day event here in Utah, where it's an in-person, we dive into how to really create this structure of a door knocking culture, whether it's mm-hmm. recruiting, training, onboarding, culture, motivating, you know, pay scale, all the structures. And I think a lot of realtors are like, well, that's foreign to me. So this would be the place you'd come for two days. And you just pick my brain. We go through an 80 page playbook and we just go through it. A really intimate group. Usually there's, you know, 20, 30 people in the room. And we, we dive into it. And I've done that with a few different real estate brokerages, um, cool. fat insurance there. We've had, you know, probably 20 different industries come through, um, pergolas to windows to, I mean, painting random, mm-hmm. but like, I think anybody that's kind of trying to say, where do I start? What do I do? How do I be better at that? Um, and then we have other events like closer school live coming up April 28th and 29th in Vegas with Bradley, Cody Askins, you know, on the insurance side, you have Carlos Reyes on the, um, real estate side. So like Bradley, Andy Elliott on the mm-hmm. car side. So I've put together kind of like, how do we get a ver- versatile group of speakers, me on the door side, um, that can teach sales. I just think there's a low level of sales training out there that, is more, you know, there's tons of marketing trainer. You as a marketer, you probably see every F and funnel yeah. and every agency pop up, how to start an agency, how do you do this, yeah, like right. YouTube, the Instagram yeah. follow, like not many are like, let me teach you beat the streets. Like let yeah. me teach you scripts and psychology and NLP and, and how to really handle objections and how do you get, how do you stay motivated when you're effing defeated all day? And like, you know, yeah. how do you manage people? Like where you're a marketer, you're just behind the scenes, like ad spend, mm-hmm. conversion ratios, metrics, right. X, Y, Z. 
it doesn't hurt when it's like, damn it, nobody watched my ad. You're not like, yeah. ah. But when somebody like sprays you with a hose and calls the cops on you and it's like, you're a piece of shit. Like, yeah, you don't go home the same. You know what I mean? You're just like, ah, right. I am. Like, right. <laughs> right. What, 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 one of the things you said, I, I kind of want to, I want to kind of springboard off of, um, uh, and, and talk about kind of the psych- psychology side of it, right? So, so there's a human level to to sales, uh, to mar- you know, to prospecting. Obviously, really to anything that we do. But what are what's some advice? I mean, you 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 know, when you're out there hustling, when you're out there talking to somebody that might feel defeated, because you're exactly right. You know, uh, our, our audience has to be motivated because they might have gotten hung up on. They might have been, you know, told whatever name in, in the book that you know someone could think of like how, do, how how does a person dig inside deep inside psychologically and break through and create i'm gonna use the word discipline right habit forming yeah right? you got to get out there you got to start doing it but um what, what's your thoughts around like the discipline side of of just getting out there and doing stuff yeah i mean that's a that's a really great question and i'd kind of put it into three categories um, you know, discipline, first off, it's like, it comes from the word disciple and it's like yeah. deci- discipline. It's like, you're my disciples. I'm disciplined. And then you're like, wait a minute, is there a positive or negative? A lot of people think I'm disciplining my kid. Well, it's right, like, no, I'm right. discipling my kid. You yeah. know? So there's this element of like, you're not disciplining. Like we have a negative context to it. It's like, I need to be disciplined. And I'm like, no, it's like, aligned would be a better word in my opinion meaning am i aligned with my highest self and i think there's external factors that tend to really try to knock us off our external self Mm -hmm. right or Mm -hmm. or, or our internal self and i think you know when it comes to checking in and saying where is my highest self that would be step one it would be like okay my highest self or like like think of like you and you're like completely aligned with Jesus Christ. Like think, you know, let's just not take religion out, but just like he was supposed, supposedly perfect. Right. So you're like, okay. Um, he played at the highest level and you think of other people like Gandhi or mother Teresa or whatever. It's like, they play at Mm -hmm. such a high level or frequency and that's Mm -hmm. what made them iconic. And you kind of have to say, okay, what's the iconic version of me and how would it show up? And then test stress test that with each action that you're doing today. So you're like, Okay, would my highest self quit the gym early today or finish the full workout? Would my highest self push a little bit farther today? Or is it, you know, like, where is that highest self? And and I found that man needs to be pushed, you know, three to four percent just beyond its edge. And if you're not pushing just beyond its edge, then you're at your your you know, you have this atrophy, you have this I'm declining, yeah. I'm this going backwards. And so it's like the next stage would be, so firstly, check in, stress test it. Stage two would be like, find opportunity to be mentally tough in other areas than just going out knocking or going out and selling or getting your face kicked in. So like yesterday, today, get into my like 35 degree water in the backyard and did cold plunge. And, you know, today I did a workout and yesterday I did a workout. And then I I fasted 24 hours on Tuesday and I'm intermittent Mm -hmm. fasting now. Like, so it's like, what's things that you can do that are like hard that you're kind of forcing yourself to be under a harder pressure so that then the other pressures that come don't seem as hard. You're like, well, it's not as hard as a cold plunge. It's not as hard as running 12 miles. Like I did an Ironman and Mm -hmm. it was simply just like stress test, like, where is my physical limit? But I found when I was training for an Ironman or training for a marathon, for example, my business did better. My health was mm-hmm. better. My this was better. And, you know, I think a lot of times we think we have to juggle one element of our life and sacrifice the other. It's like if I want to be good at relationships, I'm going to be bad at business. Or if I'm going to be good at business, I'm going to be bad at this. Or if I want to work hard here, I'm like, I think there's an element of they all bleed into each other. And it's like when I'm winning in one, I, I change my verbiage to I'd be winning in all, which is another category of self-talk. So impeccable with your word would be the way that I would say, how do we combat this, this uh, kind of friction that comes through adversity, rejection, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I would say just by your ability to speak things, not from story, not from victim, but to speak things with very uh, choice words, meaning you said, I can't, right? So it's like, I just took that word out of my dictionary. I'd say, I choose not to, 
I won't because I'm more decisive, mm -hmm. right? Like I haven't been able to so far, <laughs> meaning like up until this point, I have not been able to versus I'm not saying I can't. I'm just saying I haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a moment in my life was like, I can't dunk. I can't jump. And I kept telling myself that. And I finally was like, you know, I'm 30 years old. I'm like, no, I'm 5'10 white. Is it possible that a 5'10 white dude that's 32 dunk? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just have never been able to touch the rim. So therefore, I believe myself. Of course, I've never been able to dunk. So I said, let's put this to the test. And I, you know, I trained and I said, let's do some jump training yeah. and see what's out there. And, and I learned how to dunk. And I was like, wow, mm -hmm. I like saw improvement. But we get stuck in the mm -hmm. story of I can't. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. just a story we tell ourselves. And so, yeah. you know, whether it's you need people in your life to call you out and be like, that's a story, dude. Like, stop telling yourself that. So I just say those things like stress test against like your highest self, um, find opportunities to enforce discipline and, and stress on your body and, and lean into the uncomfortable, find calm in the chaos and then change your language patterns. I think it's right. so important how we talk to ourselves. Yeah. I, I think there's so much wisdom in those three points and, and uh, at the end of the day, you know, <clears throat> I like endurance uh, sports, I like running and cycling and stuff like that. And um, I, I think that, you know, I equate it to like if you're out there running a marathon or a half marathon, you know, looking to start, um, you got to look for a pacer, you know, so, someone that can kind of help you pace uh, to, to, to meet your goal, but also encourage you along the way. I've been I've been one of those before. Um, and I think, you know, in sales, I think that everyone needs to some degree a pacer too. Um, yes. So I think there's that extra external factor right of encouragement it's just so so important and can be uh for the positive especially if you're leading a sales you know team um that can be kind of infectious across them like you see you see you know this rep over here doing you know just just meeting all his goals and 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 being an example it, it's con hopefully, you know a contagious kind of thing but what one of the things you said is really important and I'm just gonna put myself out there in, in this is, is that, is that self-talk, uh, right. It, and that, and, and the brain, and that gets into like the, 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 the kind of the, the, the specifics of the mental side of things of where, you know, you kind of have that whisper of, ah, you can't, you know, I can't, I, I you know, I could start my own business, yeah. but you know, I can't or, or something like that. And, and, and the things that you're talking about, you know, are really important. And, uh, that, that, that self-talk kind of naturally, kind of can put you in that that default state you know where you, you just don't know yeah. you, and, and then it and just kind of seems to spiral that bleeds into anything like if you're like i yeah. can't run a marathon i'm like i bet you, you could you know right. i can't and then you're like well they're probably saying that somewhere else in your life you know if you're listening yeah. to this and you're like i can't do that it's like well you're you're now just using that camp mentality or victim mentality in other categories in your own life. Like I can't knock doors. It's like, no, knocking doors isn't that hard. You walk up and you use your knuckles and you go like this. That's it. Like, I think everybody sure. should do that. I mean, I was in a wheelchair and I still did it. Like, you know, I, I broke my ankle one summer and it was just like, no. And the doctor's like, you gotta wait six weeks. And I'm like, F that, give me some crutches yeah. or something. I'll, I'll figure it yeah. out. Like, right. like there's very few things that would stop you from knocking on doors. So don't say you couldn't do that. It's just you've told yourself that. And then it's like, where else are you telling yourself that? And that, that well of motivation that powers you, um, I mean, that, 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 that's got to go deeper than just like sales strategy and tactics, right? I mean, that's getting into like you as a person. Um, I mean, I, I think about, you know, individuals that we talk to and especially kind of like our new, new, in, like the new agent segment, not to, to, to pick on them, but, you know, they're coming into, you know, real estate or insurance as a, as a brand new, they, they want to give it a shot. They maybe were successful at something else and trying to see if they could, you know, uh, you know, make a pivot, obviously with the last couple of years and in, in COVID and stuff, we've seen kind of a migration in different professions and stuff like that. But sales is tough. I mean, it's hard. Right. And so you got to have, in my opinion, a pacer. You got to be listening to stuff like what Sam's talking about. But that's why I wanted to also have you on because, you know, call a coach, call a mentor, whatever it is. You got to have somebody that's going to help you um, maybe internally in your own structure, your manager, hopefully, uh, that's 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 pacing you along. But we also have individuals that are, you know, it's just themselves and they're out there trying to, you know, make those that deal count. They put a goal of 30 you know, transactions, uh, you know, for a year or something like that. So they have to really dig deep into that self 
self-motivation. And yeah. I just think it's key, key stuff, you know, um, because it's so easy to, ah, I got yelled at, I made three calls and I got yelled at and just call it good. Right. Yeah. No, I'd say find a, find a community. Like, you know, if you're a kind of a lone wolf and you're just getting in and like find a community, we have a Facebook group called the DD tribe. It's got a bunch of knockers in it and you're just like post every day and just be like, Hey, here was what I did today. There's some accountability for you. Um, or it's, uh, you know, whether it's listen to my podcast every single day or this podcast, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like on my way to area or have your freaking wife. I don't care. Like have somebody in your corner that's like pushing you, but willing to call you out on your shit. Like if you come home at yeah. six and you told yourself you're going to be out till eight, then mm -hmm. have some like true accountability there. And then yeah. I love that you said pacer in the sense of like, you know, everybody's like, it was funny. I'm going to do a keynote. I do a lot of like keynoting and mm -hmm. I was out in Ohio this week, or wait, what is today? Yeah, yeah, this week. Um, me and Phil Heath, the seven-time Mr. Olympian, spoke. Yeah, and, sure. You know, and she's like, I, I went from going on a cruise, so flying from Miami to Ohio, and I'm in the line in this in Miami, and the guy's like, "What do you do?" He's like, and I was like, "I don't know. I travel a lot." He's like, "Wow, you do?" He's like, "Are you some like motivational speaker or something?" And I was like, "I guess I've never like called myself some motivational speaker, but." And I was like, yeah, I guess I, guess I am. And then, and then Dee's like, well, how do you motivate people? <laughs> and she's like, what motivated you when you were out selling a lot? And I really had to dig deep. She like really quizzed me on that question because I was about to go give a keynote. And she's like, you need to motivate and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to sprinkle motivation on you. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. And I was like, <laughs> you know what got me is I was like, I hated losing. So when I had somebody that I knew that I could beat, you know, and, and compete yeah. against, and like you said, a pacer, that naturally was like, if they're beating me, like, it's so funny when I have competitors today that come into my market, like there's new events that have popped up since mine and there's sure. been yeah. copycats and there's been, you mm -hmm. know, knockoffs. And I'm like, cool, that's, I'm so grateful for you. Why? Because now I know I have somebody kick their ass because I pioneered my own like little like mm -hmm. mission and I had yeah. nobody that I was like playing with. And now I'm like, Ooh, cool. I created an ocean and now people are swimming in my ocean. Let's go. Yeah, it's game time. Like, <laughs> so... Well, I mean, you know, you can define leadership in, in many different ways, I suppose. But I think one that I that's always kind of wrong, uh, been true to that I've always kind of uh, aligned to um, or looked for in, in a leadership is quality is people that are, are people um, moving towards this individual. And um, that comes, you know, on, on, on the, uh, you know, on the shoulders of, or the practice of authenticity. Are they practicing what they're talking about? Are they executing it you know and 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 you know that stuff that stuff happens all the time and, and, and in our competitive market as well um with our products and stuff we see that too um but it's it's super important to you know uh ha, you know have that internal motivation that, that we're talking about and it's really something i wanted to 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 focus on with you because i i, I you know we're a part of your, your, your group and, and I've been at your events and, and the type of natures of speakers that you surround yourself with and the different events. I mean, um, it, it shows an authenticity there around being a, a this, let me put it very bluntly to our audience. Sam is somebody that you should be following. I don't care if you're in, uh, you know, a boutique type industry. Um, we, we have a pretty w wide reach, you know, just with our 70 plus years of being in business. But I can tell you that he's an individual that's been out there doing it. But you need to, you know, take note of some of the stuff that he's talking about and the people that he surrounds himself with, you know, because I always um, I have a personal mentor that talks about, like, who, who's your personal board of directors? And I'm not yeah. going to ask you on this podcast necessarily to get into like your personal relationships stuff like that but you you mentioned like the people that you surround yourself with if you're going to surround yourself with a bunch of kind of just duds that want to sit around and and just i don't know not that there's necessarily anything wrong with video games but if they just consume you and they take over your time of where you could be out there actually you know achieving and progressing i think at the at the end of the day what we're talking about here sam is yeah there's success through 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 making money and commission and that drive that that has a place in it but personal progression to break through, like, I don't know. I, I think that the brain, there's probably a psychologist that's way smarter than me that could tell us, as a matter of fact, you had one at the event here a couple months ago, uh, that there's, there's probably a chemical reaction there that you can, once you feel that, right, it's like a runner's high. Once you break into that, once you break through to that, you will find a level of motivation um, that, can, that, that, that awakens every day. 
I, I love that point. And, and that's why I'm like, ask yourself, like, and you can have categories of friends. Like, I have a couple friends. It's like, we never talk about work. We never talk about anything other yeah. than just like, I just want to shoot the shit and yep. just be me. Right. Like, yep. and that's okay. And I, right. you know, spend my time as much as I choose to with that. Like, it's not like every day I'm hanging with that group. Right. But it's like, right. yeah, every month, once a month, we get together and we just do stupid stuff. But mm-hmm. then it's like, who am I? And a lot of people I have to pay, like Phil Heath. I For meet sure. him on Monday and I was like, dude, homie, let's be friends. And now I book something with him and we're doing a collaborate on this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what, what does he want? Right. And I figured out how mm-hmm. to be his friend and like yeah. connected well with him. I, I, I left an impact on him to where he's calling me the mm-hmm. next day being like, wow, like you're different. And I'm like mm-hmm. the one percenters, they want to hang out with the other one percenters. They want to say, what can you bring to the table? What can I bring to the table? And where's their win-win? And if you're just always talking about who won the bachelor and you know, what's the next football yeah. game. Like, and it's like, cool. Right. Everybody in the house, their dog can watch ESPN and regurgitate some stupid information. <laughs> but like right. I'm over right. here, like I'm winning. I'm, I'm talking about yeah. winning. I'm talking about strategy. I'm talking about value. I'm, I'm reading books. I'm, I'm, I'm adding value. So like a lot of the people that I've built relationships with, cause like Phil Heath was like, Oh yeah, Tim Grover. Like I was like, Oh yeah, I could call Tim. He's like, yeah, Tim's my coach. And like we create affinity. It's like, we hang out with similar people where, you know, I had to pay Tim Grover and then I had to build a relationship. I had to make mm-hmm. an impact. And like, mm-hmm. I look for opportunities to be like, who am I associating with and how do I make a lasting impression with them to where they're like, yeah, I respect, I'll pick up his phone call. And I, if he needed something, I got his back and he, I know if right. I needed something, I got my back. And yeah, it's huge. That's key. That's key. It's huge stuff. I mean, e- even, even, you know, um, just in like a personal network, you know, for, for things, you know, I know I have to lean into a certain network for, for parenting and, you know, or run something by like, you know, and, and then sometimes I walk away from those conversations. Like there's a little bit of relief, like, okay, I'm not the only one. Right. So there's, there's that human level, but then there's also like this professional kind of, you know, uh, uh, level of, you know, always trying to, to progress. And I think, I think that that, you know, and it goes a little beyond the the focus of what the the info podcast is about, but that message could it sh- is something that a, in a lot of factors, you know, needs to be heard is um, you know, th- whether it's younger generations or different personas or however you want to look at it is um, you know, there is a place for the hustle culture, but there's also this this progression and surrounding yourself around excellence that care about you that are in your corner is super important because there's a lot of people out there that want to tear you down for whatever reason, especially, you know, in competitive kind of nature types of things. Right. And it can wear on you. you get up, the higher you get up in life, the more you're going to feel that the more people are like, wait, 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 wait for me. Where are you going? And you're just like, I'm on a mission to the Mars, brother. Like you can come. And what's, (laughs) I want to, I want to put something else on that. Like, I think a lot of people, like a lot of the successful people, they put on some face one of my missions is to be like, dude, I'm still quirky, goofy. I call myself sea otter, Sam. Like my energy is so like <laughs> weird. And if you probably hung out with me, you'd be like, really this guy? Um, I'm the first one up on the table dancing at a club. I'm the one that's just like goofy as goof. Mm-hmm. And I think like so many people lose themselves in the sense of like, I have to be this like certain thing to be successful. And I got to button my shirt up and I got to do this and I got to sure. be that. And like, I'm like, dude, authenticity is like one of the key elements of influence. Like if you can still be you and not lose who you are and go after and personally aggress and like, I'm, I'm literally making fart jokes with Phil Heath and like, you know, I have people looking at me, they're like, what are you like? This is Mr. (laughs) Olympian. And he's over here just laughing his ass off because he's like, finally, somebody that's willing to talk like a human. Right. That'd be like, oh, but it's this, you know, God, that's got 5 million followers or whatever. And it's like, I'm like, dude, just. I'm going to be me. I don't care if your name's Donald Trump or, or me. Yeah, like, right. I, yeah. I'm just going to be me. So. Well, that authenticity is important and, and it definitely shows through all the different uh, things that I've been exposed to uh, with, with your firm, even down to like, um, you know, some of the fam, you know, at the, at the events, you know, your, your family will stop by and talk and just, there's a sense of, gen- you know, of, of, of purpose and genuineness that, uh, that is throughout your whole organization with whoever we work uh, with. And, and so I'm looking at my, my daughter's notes here and she said uh, something to the effect of, uh, ask Sam about like, how do you break through the impossible? Right. That's like a big question. And I was trying to think about like in her, her brain, what, what she, she kind of means by that. And, and so I asked her and she's like, well, you guys do marketing stuff and sales stuff. Right. And, and you know, 
most people delete emails and different things like that. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting from, from my little conversation with my daughter of like, I, you know, how, she, she wouldn't have said it this way, but you know, that next knock, that next phone call that you make that someone answers or that next um, appointment that you go to, there's the possibility it could be life changing. You're always one door away from a new life. You're a one door away from a millionaire. You're one door away. I mean, that's the thing. Like people don't realize, like when I say one door, I mean, you could randomly meet one person that then connected you to one person that was like your million dollar commission deal. And you're like, oh, wow. I didn't even like know that was coming. So like, how do you break through the impossible? It's first being able to manifest and design what's impossible, like design and mm -hmm. visualize like beyond what your possible is. We mm -hmm. all have our own possible that we've created through our own lens and our own story. So right. like I have a book coming out, Selfless Plug, April 27th, we're launching The Self Experience. And you can go to my website, thesamtagger.com, you can pre-order it. Um, but it's, a, it's basically about how to break outside of your own box. We all were put into boxes and those boxes are what created possibility for us. And so when you can conceptualize beyond your own box or beyond your impossible. So like thinking of just like even ludicrous, like I wanted to design, like I wanted a Ferrari, but I don't, I'm too cheap to buy one. Right. And I'm like, yeah. what if I got a Ferrari, but it was from free money that I just somehow somebody gave me. And you're like, what? That's impossible. How's somebody just going to give you 290 grand or whatever? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I'm the one designing it. So F it. God's, if God wanted to design something like that, I'm sure he could whip it up. He, he, he made mm -hmm. kangaroos and giraffes and stuff. So like, can I like get a free Ferrari? And so I just started thinking different. And all of a sudden, two weeks later, mm -hmm. I get a check from the ERC that was 290 grand. And I was like, <laughs> damn, like free money from the government. Like, I was like, what the heck? I didn't even know right. it was a thing. You know, so it's like, um, you know, so I think like people, we underestimate the the power of creation, the power of mm -hmm. like what's out there. And I think yeah. we, we are the ones that are creating our own impossible. So it's like manifest your ideal client, manifest your own, you know, your ideal partner, your ideal employee. I've done those practices over and over and over again for the last 10 years. I'm like, I'm gonna drop my dream house three years later to lived in the dream house. I'm gonna drop this. I'm gonna yeah. drop that. But yeah. it's like, where are you putting, what are you calling impossible? And then now really imagining, because reality is, yeah, somebody gave me 290 grand, having to be the government. And everybody said that, well, that's impossible. Like, wh why would you just get free money out of nowhere? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just testing this principle of mm -hmm. breaking through the impossible. One of the things that I thought was interesting that you talked about, I heard you speak, um, and I kind of want to close out the episode with this is, I know for me personally, I'll start uh, with this. Um, I drive a lot of motivation from my parents um, and, and a lot of kind of what drives me is things that they've passed on. And I heard you give a very passion speech at uh, this last DDD con here earlier this year about your dad and what he meant to you and, 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 and his example. And, um, you know, if you would just kind of pack that a little bit. Uh, I mean, I know for me, my parents both, and I'm sure it's the same for you, um, are a bit, you know, a big reason of, of the makeup of who I am and what kind of motivates me and I want to make them proud and stuff like that. But, um, I think that there is definitely, you know, a legacy that also kind of motivates us at times too. Right. I love my parents. Then still have a phenomenal relationship with them. Yeah. Um, hanging out tonight, you know, it's like, I think having a relationship, whether they were shitty parents, great parents, whatever, is very important. Mend that if you haven't. Um, but luckily, my, my dad was an entrepreneur. I mean, I grew up in a family where it was a roller coaster. It was he'd try to invent something and then it wouldn't work. And then he'd do land development and it would work. And then he'd buy these houses and then it would work. And then he'd start this other thing and it wouldn't work. And so it just kind of went through the roller coaster of like, you know, success and not success and success and not success. He started a company called OGO Bags, which was a big mm -hmm. hit and then sold yeah. that. And then um, he started a company or he did big land development projects and they got rocked by the the 2008 crash. And then he had another crash. And then, he, you know, he had like three loses in yeah. a row that lost him everything. And, you know, he's 60 years old at that point. And he's like, I just remember looking at it. And he's like, Sam, you can't 
go get a normal job when you have a debt payment of 25 grand a month or something. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, mm-hmm. he's like, my interest payment alone is 25 grand. <laughs> so yeah. it's yeah. like, you can't just be like, hey, hire me for this thing. He's like, you have to hit yeah. a home run like, at that point. Mm-hmm. And he just always had this mentality of like, I'm going to win. I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to not lose my family, my value systems on the way. And, you know, he's always about priorities. It's always about like, you know, put first things first. It's like God first, family, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and then go hustle, go make it happen. Mm -hmm. And he has amazing relationships that he's been able to cultivate over the years and put himself in networks that have helped him slingshot to success. And then he launched a company called PMD, um, super successful it's a microdermabrasion tool completely off the top you know what i mean it's like totally different mm-hmm. and um and but what was just the respect and the the values that i learned from him was was always motivating and it was kind of like he laid a pathway he was a pioneer to wealth and success in, in our generation and um i can never be thankful enough to just have a father that was a and, and mom too. I, my mom was freaking badass. She's always like, Sam, don't yeah. say that. She take that post down. Like she's always like watching <laughs> shit. He's like, she's like, Sam, you realize like you, you you're a brand man. Like, and she's like, yeah. oh, that, she was like, yeah, that was like a seven. You know, when everybody else is telling you like <laughs> you're a ten, and like she wants to tell you what you hear. And she's like, I think you could have done better. And like you know, and just motivating and like yeah, super, absolutely. Uh, it's it's I couldn't be more grateful for them. So they're awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And, and I, I totally connect with that. And so how can our audience kind of learn more about you? What's your Instagram handle? How can they find you? At the Sam Taggart. So at the Sam Taggart or at DDD experts. So we have two, and then you can go to the DDD experts.com. And yeah, we're always doing cool stuff. Like I said, like I'm taking a group of high vibe people. If you guys want to come to Africa in the summer, August 7th through the 17th, it's just open to, you know, cool people we just vet you yeah. and just make sure you're high vibe and aren't going to be like yeah. a little pansy when we go jump with cage dive with great whites and safari <laughs> right, right, right. lines so like you know yeah, we, absolutely right yeah, yeah um and we're, we're always doing cool stuff and so you know the ddexperts.com and the sam and you know follow those two instagrams and you know that would probably be youtube you know we're on all the platforms okay. but reach out love to help love to support anybody that's on there sam you're making it happen man and uh we we are privileged to have you as a partner at cole just as a just a mutual kind of like you know uh partnership of of trying to help people navigate and build you know the their uh, sales pipelines but also be successful and i appreciate the uh, hour of your time today and and uh, i know i took a ton of motivational stuff from it and encouragement and uh, i want our audience keep uh keep uh sam on your radar follow him follow his crew they're making it happen it's authentic stuff that's one of the things and the purposes of this podcast is just because we're a 70 plus year brand we have a lot of different perspectives and different people we talk to and one of my goals of this podcast is to kind of filter filter out uh i'll say the bs out there you know there's a lot of there's a lot out there follow sam follow ddd experts um and 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 get connected in uh, whatever way fits best for you sam Thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. I hope this episode provided value to you as a salesperson. If you enjoyed our content, please like, subscribe, and leave a review. Make sure to join us for the next episode of the Info by Cole Information.